for that. And uh, welcome everyone. And as uh, you heard, we are recording this session. I will share the screen. Please let me know you see it. Yep, it's out there. Fabulous. I'm sharing my large screen, so hopefully you're not seeing something tiny or in some distorted way. And uh, welcome to our meeting. Everyone is uh, welcome every Saturday, and we have sometimes we have a guided discussion on current events, and uh, other times we have uh, featured speakers. And uh, today you are having me as a featured speaker. And the the focus of our presentation today and the discussion that will follow International Women's Day and the contribution of women in uh, advances in aerospace and space exploration. International Women's Day is celebrated annually on March 8. And it is it has been observed since the early 1900s. The day recognizes social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women and marks a call to action for gender equality. <clears throat> the where it started is in 19, 1908, a group of women workers in the garment and textile industry in New York City organized a protest to demand better working conditions, higher pay, and voting rights. The protest took place on March 8, and um, around 15,000 women marched to New York City for shorter work hours. The slogan, Bread and Roses, emerged with the bread symbolizing economic security, and roses for better living standards. Many of those who protested for working rights were young immigrants from Europe who came to the United States seeking better opportunities. And guess what? It started in America, but International Women's Day not really known in America as much as it is known around the world. In 1910, at the International Conference of Working Women in Copenhagen, Clara Setkin, and a German socialist, proposed that a Women's Day be established on a global level. The proposal was unanimously approved by all the attendants, and the first International Women's Day was celebrated the following year on March 19 in Austria, Denmark, Germany, and Switzerland. In the years followed, <clears throat> International Women's Day grew in popularity and became a platform that for women to advocate for their rights and demand social and political change. In 1975, the United Nations officially recognized International Women's Day, and since then it has been celebrated by people and organizations in our, around the world. In 1977, General Assembly adopted a resolution proclaiming United Nations Day for Women's Rights and International Peace to be observed on any day of the year by member states in accordance with their historical and national traditions. So in some countries, it was observed on other days. But each year, the day is marked by a different theme and events and activities are organized to raise awareness about issue affecting women and girls, such as gender-based violence, unequal pay, lack of access to education and healthcare, and underrepresentation in leadership positions. The day also celebrates the achievement of women who have made significant contributions in various fields and industries. The world has witnessed a significant change and attitudinal 
shift in both women and society thoughts about women's equality and emancipation. Many from a younger generation may feel that all the battles have been won for women, while many feminists from 1970s and beyond know only too well the longevity and ingrained complexity of patriarchy. With more women in the boardroom, greater equality in legislative rights, and an increased cri cr critical mass of women's visibility as impressive role models in every aspect of life. One could think that women have gained true equality. The unfortunate fact is that women are still not paid equally to that of their male counterparts. Women still are not presented in equal numbers in business or politics and globally. Women's education, health, and the violence against them is worse than that of men. However, great improvements have been made. We do have female astronauts and prime ministers. Although a challenge still in many countries, girls are largely welcomed into universities. Women can work while balancing the needs of a family, and women can have real choices. And so each year, the world inspires women and celebrates their achievement. International Women's Day is an official holiday in many countries. <clears throat> and I will list them so you kind of will glance the, the numbers, but also the countries themselves. Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Burkina Faso, Cambodia, China for women only, Cuba, Georgia, Guinea-Bissau, Eritrea, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Laos, Madagascar for women only, Moldova, Mongolia, Montenegro, Nepal for women only, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uganda, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Vietnam, and Zambia. The tradition sees men honoring their women, mothers, wives, girlfriends, colleagues, etc., with flowers and small girls. Growing up in Russia, International Women's Day, or March 8th, was the time when you see lots and lots and lots of flowers. I mean, it's like a sea of flowers everywhere. In some countries, International Women's Day has the equivalent status of Mother's Day, where children give small presents to their mothers and grandmothers. Many news websites actively engage in International Women's Day running special International Women's Day features in partnership with their clients. And doing that, they can, whether through controversy or collaboration, to drive visibility and traffic to their female-focused content. The elevation of print and digital content across the world, promoting International Women's Day contribute contributes positively to a global dialogue and narrative about women's equality. A global web of rich and diverse local activities connects women from all around the world. And as I mentioned yesterday, attending the Women in Data Science, this is just one example of many events that took place coinciding with March 8th. And there's others that are will be coinciding with the inter, the Women History Month that around the globe, it drives more political rallies, business conferences, government activities. Uh, many global corporations actively support International Women's Day by, run, by running their own events and campaigns. For example, on March 8th, you see the Google uh, offers Google Doodle on its global search to honor International Women's Day. On an individual basis, it is important to understand, value, and seek out the inclusion of women and girls. Additionally, sharing this knowledge supports and encourages with others is the key. On an organizational and group basis, there are many ways to ensure the needs, interests, and aspirations of women and girls are valued and included. Organizations and groups 
can inspire inclusion. By the way, inspire inclusion is the slogan and the theme for International Women's Day organization. And uh, they are encouraging through actions in areas such as the ones that I listed, a few that supporting women and girls in leadership, decision-making, business and STEM, designing and building infrastructure, meeting the needs of women and girls. And uh, the list can go on. This is just a small subset of what we can do, all of us, support. You don't have to support all, support at least something. So improve participation of women and girls in all the activities that are available to everyone in 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 our current lives just for fun i wanted to stop just i hope i'm not going to break anything and uh, let's see i wanted to show the riddle let's see can you see it yeah, I see mine space. Space of people to solve. Can you hear? Can record their responses. Feel free faintly. To Say it again. Very faintly. Very faintly. Hold on. Let's see if I can increase. I know there's a secret in sharing. It's a bit also. Are you ready? Um. The riddle. A father is about to bring his son to a job interview, applying for a position at a large stockbroker's company in the city. Just as they arrive at the company's parking lot, the son's phone rings. He looks at his father, who says, go ahead, answer it. The caller is the trading company CEO, who says, Good luck, son. You've got this. The son ends the call and once again looks at his father, who is still next to him in their car. How is this possible? He gets a call from the city. So did 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 you hear the the yeah, riddle? Yeah, we we could hear it. Yeah, I got up closer to the computer. The volume was a little bit better, but. Uh, I, I've heard this one in the past. It was a doctor instead of CEO, but uh, I won't give it away. I'll let somebody else. Uh... <laughs> so just a short discussion. And uh, the, I guess uh, I'll roll a little bit more to to get the, the gist of it. CEO, uh, but it says, good luck, son. He was next to him. So it's not the father. I think it was probably an audio recording of his father. Maybe he made it a, a demo tape. Like is like he has two fathers. So maybe it's a word joke. Like it's the grandfather of the son. No, I think his name is Son. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's just like an old man, you know, calling a younger guy son. Okay. So this is uh, basically a gender bias, just to give you a, a hint. And um, the, the, the answer to the riddle is that was his mother. But this as a unfortunate, unfortunately, when, when we, in general, we global, we, when we hear CEO, the picture in the mind being drawn in most cases, it's a, it's a male. The first picture is not a female. And this is the reality. And that's what International Women's Day and uh, organizations related to women's rights trying to break. And now we're moving into a little bit closer home. The, the women related to Women's History Month and women in aerospace. And women 
we know have made significant contributions to aerospace industry since the earliest days of aviation. Here is a brief overview of the history of women in aerospace, the early pioneers. In the early days of uh, aviation, women like Amelia Earhart and Bessie Coleman broke barriers as pilots and helped uh, to popularize aviation. In 1930, Amelia Earhart became the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. And Bessie Coleman uh, was the uh, first black woman aviator. Uh, Bessie Coleman earned her pilot license in 1921 in France, two years before her more famous counter con contemporary Amelia Earhart. During World War II, those that know history and uh, knew that women uh, played a vital role in uh, the aerospace industry. With many men serving in the military, women took on jobs traditionally held by men, including aircraft manufacturing and testing. The Rosie the Riveter campaign encouraged women to join the workforce and help to popularize the idea of women working in non-traditional roles. Uh, Rosie the Riveter, uh, here on the uh, on the lower picture. So this is her in the top, and this is her in the bottom. She was a hundred years old, visited plane uh, model she helped build during World War II, under restoration by Seattle Museum. Helen uh, Mary Bodrin, her name never thought she would see the planes she worked on her uh, in her early 20s in museum collection one day. But six months after her 100th birthday, she got that chance. She worked six days a week, 12 hours a day between 1942 and 1945 in a segregated Goodyear factory in Akron, Ohio, putting together the planes that were used during World War II. Her role helped inspire the famous Rosie Derivator campaign to recruit women workers to the industrial labor force. Before that, Wodrin worked at the Ravina Arsenal in Ohio, which manufactured gunpowder and fuses. Amazing. In 1950 and 1960, the space race between the United States and Soviet Union brought new opportunities for women in aerospace. In 1961, Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman to go to space. And in 1983, Sally Ride became the first American woman in space. In recent years, today, Women contribute to make important, con continue to make important contributions to aerospace industry. Women are astronauts, engineers, scientists, and executives at NASA and private aerospace companies. And we have representation right now. I'm so happy with all, well, except for astronauts at the moment on, on our call in here. In recent years, women have also made uh, history in spaceflight with Christina Koch and um, had Jessica uh, com completing the first all-female spacewalk in, 19 in 2019. Despite their achievements, women still face challenges in the aerospace industry, including gender bias and inequality representation in leadership position. However, organizations like Women in Aerospace and the Society of Women Engineers are working to support and advance women in the industry. And this is today, brand new. Uh, Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Grebenkin. So on the lower, uh, a lower picture, uh, from left to right, and NASA astronauts Michael Barrett, Matthew Dominic, and Jeanette Epps, they are posing for a photo during their crew equipment in interface test at NASA Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Crew 8 is the 
eight crew rotation mission of SpaceX human space transportation system to space station through NASA commercial crew program. The liftoff uh, occurred in uh, on Sunday, uh, March 3rd, and they joined the space uh, station expedition 70 crew of NASA astronauts, uh, Jasmine Mon Monkbelli, I hope I'm not butchering their names, Laurel O'Hara, uh, ESA astronaut Andreas Monkinson, JAXA astronaut Furukawa Satoshi, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov, Oleg Kananenko, and Nikolai Chu. For a short time, the number of crew aboard the space station increased to 11 people until crew seven members, Monbeli, Magensen, Satoshi, and Borisov will return to Earth. And uh, here's the, the three women that are right now in space above, floating above us and making history. Thank you. I will stop sharing. Very nice, yay. And I will stop recording for now.